everybody, merhaba, I'm Kenan Paleo, Her Majesty's Consul General in Istanbul, and today I'm with Begum Hanum and Gözde Hanum, and I'm their guests, trying to convince them to become Consul Generals, and I think I can, uh, I think Begum can't be, because she works for me, and I don't want to lose her, but I'm going to try and work on Gözde Hanum and see how far that goes. Hi there, Gösta Hanlon, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm very well indeed. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming, very exciting, my first podcast in really? Turkey. Yeah, cool. That's our first podcast in English. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting okay. as well. Okay. It's a test for us okay. as well. Very exciting. Thank you so much. First of all, can you please tell us a bit about yourself and your background? Like a summary of your career, maybe a little bit about your life. Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, I was born in South London. Uh, my parents are Turkish Cypriot. I studied uh, at university in Birmingham, where I did East Mediterranean and African studies, and then went to SOAS, where I was working uh, in the field of um, health, uh, substance misuse prevention, and sexual health with uh, people from the Turkish communities in London. Uh, and then eventually I went into the NHS, where I was a, a, a health professional, uh, and then went into commissioning managing um, and supporting a range of different communities, such as refugees, asylum seekers, homeless uh, people, people from black and minority ethnic communities, people with mental health issues. And then one time, uh, my mentor, who uh, was working in the UK government said, why don't you try and get a job uh, for a short while to, to work in, uh, in government? And so I did. I started working in what we call Whitehall, which is where all our government departments were, and a secondment for a year. And in that time, I decided that I loved it. And so I worked on a whole bunch of stuff, uh, including climate change and energy, energy security, counter-terrorism uh, work as well and, and uh, protecting uh, people. I worked on equality and diversity issues uh, and then I got an opportunity to go overseas and so I went to Slovenia, lived there uh, in Ljubljana as a national advisor for their Ministry of Economy on climate and energy issues and then I decided I really loved international work and diplomacy so I applied to take up my first diplomatic posting, which I did in Berlin, in uh, the embassy there as head of the Europe uh, Science Innovation Network of Diplomats and Attaches, which was phenomenal. Uh, went back to the UK and worked for an innovation agency there as head of global, then came back to Berlin as deputy trade commissioner and counsellor for uh, our trade relationship with primarily Germany and the UK, and then a whole bunch of other uh, countries in Europe, so that was fantastic. And then I ended up here in Istanbul, which is my dream job. So yeah, that's in a nutshell um, who I am uh, and how I got here and uh, and why we've ended up here now in my office in this really hot day. Uh, so um, yeah, that's it. You look so young to be done all of those things. Oh, çok teşekkür ederim. I'm serious. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe it. Uh -huh. How cool. <laughs> Can I <get> <laughs> Hip, hip, aesthetic, yap, madam. This is all natural. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Kenan, maybe we have a quiz for our guests okay. um, to test their knowledge about their occupation. Mm -hmm. And since you're a representative of Great Britain... Oh no, so I know what's coming now. No. I'm really scared. <laughs> no, there are silly questions. Okay, um, yes. But we have five questions. I'm starting with the first question. How many smartphones are there in London? Oh no, oh my god, that's such a good question. Yeah. I would say that there's at least three billion. Not close, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, people <laughs> coming in and out, yeah. flying, landing as yeah, yeah, well, yeah. so... I'm doing okay, those maybe, maybe if you count it like that, okay. uh, but the answer is 53 million users. 53 million, oh, that's what yeah. I meant, sorry. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Yeah. I'm Probably misheard. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the world's longest running show that is performed in London? A, a, a theatre? Yeah. Show. Is it Mousetrap? Yeah. Oh my god, there you go. Yeah, hey. That's so cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> I aim to be cool, Gustav. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thank you. What is the most common name in the UK? 
So I want to say something like John or Peter. Am I even close? No. Um, I mean... Is it a man? Is it a, uh, is it a, man, it's is it a man's, man's name? name? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I don't know. It's David Smith. Oh, David Smith. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Sounds yeah. like a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> like the <ages. laughs> So, do you know what's the most covered Beatles song ever? Uh, um, is it Let It Be or Hey Jude? I'm going to say Let It Be. It's yesterday. <gasps> yesterday. Yeah, okay, yeah. there you go. So, okay. Uh, what's the total number of corgi dogs that Queen Elizabeth had so far? Oh no! Oh gosh! Queen is listening to. I know guests. exactly. <laughs> she and you know she is my boss. Yeah. yeah. You know we are. I don't know your, your your guests can't see, but we are sitting in a room with a big portrait of her yeah. here now as well. Um, us. Oh my goodness me! Okay, can I can I say fifteen? Um, it's. 30, but it's a 70 year span. It's so, yeah. okay. so many yeah. dogs. Yeah. Good to know. I have learned yeah. already wow. on this. This podcast is a learning experience. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so, so happy to hear. So, thank you for our test. I think we can continue with our I'm interview. Yes, that you are the yeah. Yeah. of we are Britain. Coming. So, yeah. all good. These are all important questions. Mm-hmm. These yeah. are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did I get one right? I got one right. Yes. Okay. Mousetrap one. Okay, I'm very yeah, proud yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, so, you kind of answered it, but why did you choose to become a civil servant? Uh, do you know, I, I didn't. Somebody just said, uh, you should try it. And it was a scheme to bring in more people from diverse bra- backgrounds, uh, right? Because at the time, the civil service was very much full of people from a very similar kind of socioeconomic background. So I, I did it just for a, it was supposed to be six months to a year. And I just enjoyed it so much, and it was so interesting. And just being at the centre of where decisions that were made on UK policy and how they were affecting people's lives, and speaking to ministers and going to the House of Parliament uh, and you know passing notes to ministers while they were being asked questions, it was it was just fascinating. And that's kind of why I didn't. I had I had literally no idea. Nobody I knew had worked in the civil service before, worked in government before, everybody in my family uh, was working either, uh, you know, had a dry cleaners shop or a cafe uh, or, you know, just like normal jobs. And then all of a sudden I had an unnormal job. Uh, and uh, I, I just remember uh, my mentor at the time, Lydia, who's an amazing woman, she's now living in, in Malaysia. She said, why don't you think about doing a short time in Whitehall? And I was like, what's, what's Whitehall? Where's Whitehall? <laughs> <laughs> so I had no idea uh, about it. And so that, that's why. And, uh, and she said, you'd enjoy it, give it a go. And that taught me something in life about always trying things that are different and you know, not, not necessarily pigeonholing yourself into one career or one thing to do. Yeah, and things, out, things turn out great. I mean, this yeah. is the best place to work, I guess. Uh? <laughs> like, yeah, I showed her. Yeah, I'm so, so impressed with the building it and is, the gardens. I mean, it's it's yeah. something else, right? So it is a huge privilege uh, to hear so, yeah. to, to be here and living in a what we call the the, the British Palace, right? Yeah. And it's Sounds quite cool. something. And you know, when my mum and family and friends come over, they're like, "What is this? <laughs> are you living here? Like, yes, <laughs> I'm living here now." Yeah. So it's. Right, amazing. I get to work with Begum Hanum as well. Yeah, yeah. cool people. <laughs> <laughs> cool people in a cool place, right? So, what, can wrong? Wrong? what can go wrong? You know, what can go wrong? <laughs> Actually, uh, I was going to ask you, if you, do you like being Her Majesty's Council General? You kind of answered it, but would you like to add something? Oh, I, I love it. I mean, I love, I love ultimately working for the Queen. I mean, she's such a phenomenal woman and such a, you know, created such this phenomenal... Um, impression on the world because of how she worked so hard and her dedication to to, to, to all of us. So it's a huge honour to have that in my title. And I, I mean, I get to live in Istanbul and work here uh, and work with Turkish uh, people um, who have been really kind to me and really nice to me and really welcomed me uh, as well. So there's, there's nothing I don't love about this job at all. And it's just uh, also just the fact that I'm working across the wider region as well. So, you know, I get to meet and work with people from Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, 
Mongolia. I mean, it's a pretty phenomenal job, which is why I don't understand the premise of your your podcast, which is you're bored with your job, Bacon <laughs> Pamela. How, how can you be bored with your job, <laughs> right? Job. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good to know. Okay, yes. thank you. That makes me feel better. It's a yeah. huge, genuinely, it's a huge privilege, and I, I, I feel it every day. And I think that, um, when if I come in and, and look unenthusiastic, then something's gone horribly wrong because every day is exciting. There's always something interesting to do, and it's always something that we can do to affect a positive change for people in uh, UK and in Turkey yes. or Turkey. Following that inspiring. Uh, answer, I'm going to ask something <laughs> stupid. Have you met with the Queen? Right, so I met with the Queen when I was <gasps> seven years old. Wow. There was, yeah. When I said met with the Queen, I was in the same space as the Queen. That's enough. Uh, I think it was the centenary of, I think it may be part of the her um, jubilee at the time in 1977. Uh, and so we were playing all the primary schools, all the, we're, we're, we're giving a concert. And so I was, I was playing the triangle with a whole bunch of other kids who played the triangle. And I had to bang the triangle three times. <laughs> and I was just remembering just that and had been so excited about it. So I was in the same space as the Queen. She didn't come up to me and say, hello, Kenan, how are you? Because <laughs> uh, you know, there were literally thousands of other kids there <laughs> okay. as well. But I just remember being so excited. Yeah. Uh, about meeting the Queen. So in my head, I have met the Queen, but I haven't actually formally met the Queen, which is uh, sad for me. But I have met other members of the royal family. Uh, and so, oh, um, which ones? So I met Prince Charles most recently oh, when yeah. I was in Berlin, oh. uh, and uh, <laughs> that was great. And he came to speak to some uh, businesses around climate change and uh, around energy and um just you know brought great warmth and enthusiasm uh with him as well so you know that was great i really enjoyed that good day and there's a picture of me and him and him putting his hand on my back yeah. uh, but me also looking a bit like his security guard <laughs> as well so he looked like royalty and i looked like his kind of security guard as well and that's cool yeah. i could live with that yeah, yeah, Do we sure. have can we see a photo? Yeah, I think it's well to get out, yeah. basically. It's, uh, it's not a good look for me, but he looks great. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's the most impressive person you met during your duty? I mean, obviously, apart from Begum, yeah. Hanum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult. I've met so many impressive people. So, um, one of the things that was really exciting for me was when I went over to London quite early on in this job. Uh, for something called the Global Investment Summit. And at that event, I went there with some really impressive uh, Turkish business leaders who were looking to invest and grow in the UK as well. So they themselves are were really impressive. They uh, had a vision. They were all keen to address issues around climate change and a cleaner, greener growth as well. And all those projects were focused on that as well and looking to see how they can grow the UK and uh, and Turkey together, working in partnership. But also, while I was there, I got to, you know, very briefly meet the Director General of the WTO, Ngozi Okonjo Uwela, and she's a phenomenal woman as well, who's just achieved so much. I also was in a lift with Bill Gates, which I know that Begum Hanum remembers, because <laughs> it, was, it was me, it was just me and Bill Gates and his security team and we had a very slow lift ride and I thought well this is my moment for my <laughs> elevator pitch with Bill Gates and I just looked at him and went alright and he went yeah, alright yeah. and then that was it and then I just looked at my feet so it just goes to show make sure I know, I know I'm, yeah. I'm ashamed of myself for that um, just no, no. always make sure you have your elevator pitch ready so that when you get to meet impressive people you can have that conversation and ask them all those questions that you wanted to ask him. And then since I've been here, I've just met with some amazing people. I met with Ajda Pekana. Oh, That's super cool. So cool. I mean, super, super Do you cool. like her songs? I love her songs yeah. and I love her as well. She's really lovely and warm and kind. And, um, and I say this with greatest respect, just really kind of like normal. She could be sitting here now with us having a conversation Maybe she would have bought the lokum that you were talking about yes. that you didn't bring for me, but you gave yeah. to your other guests. Yes, you know. yes. 
exactly. She's probably nicer than us. <laughs> okay, very important question, especially for us when we are deciding if we want to be a council general, mm -hmm. because it's up to us to become Absolutely. a council general. As a council general, you are in the meetings all day long. Mm -hmm. And do you ever feel like sleeping in the middle of these meetings? And if yes, how do you manage not to? Uh, what do you advise us? It's a really good question. On the whole, I don't. On the whole, I, I'm really lucky because people think about what they want to discuss when I meet with them. And I think about what I want to discuss when I meet with them as well. So we tend to have quite a focused meeting. And also, um, I kind of like the business culture here as well. So people always ask about, you know, how are you? How's your family? How's, you know, did you watch football? So it feels kind of natural as well. And then we can go into some detail of some interesting stuff. So I don't tend to get bored, I have to say. Um, I have had jobs where I have been, where I did, when I do get bored, when I have to sit and be passive in a meeting and nobody's talking to me directly. And then my mind will wander and I'll look around the room. <laughs> but if it's me leading the meeting or chairing a meeting or being part of the discussion, then I, I'm, I'm fine with it. But that's my biggest challenge. So when I'm not leading a meeting, I'll, be, I'll zone out. Yeah, yeah, and so how I not how I don't do that is being very aware that that's that's my preferred <laughs> way of behaving. So I challenge myself and make sure that I don't uh, as well. So, but no, that's, I don't. I don't. It's it's really interesting. My job is your jobs would be fascinating when you become consul generals because you get to speak about really important and interesting things. Uh, you know, like you know how to support an aging economy, how to move about a city like. Istanbul or London in a clean and green and efficient way, how to uh, support people live healthier, longer, active lives, you know, how to encourage everyone to think about opportunities for everybody in society so that they can progress. I mean, it's all, it's all interesting stuff, I have to say. It's so great that you love your job so much. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Um, is there an urban legend about your job? Say that again, sorry. Uh, is there an urban legend uh, about your job that people think of? Oh, uh, yeah. So I get a lot of um, a, lot, a lot of things saying that I'm a spy, uh, <laughs> which I get that a lot, uh, which I'm not. There's so many kind is of like it conspiracy just for theories. for Turkey or like... Uh, it just, so far, it's just been for Turkey, yeah, really, I have to a, say. This is a team in Turkey. Yeah. So I think that that's, some, that's a, a real le uh, urban legend about kind of yeah. that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really, I can assure you. But not uh, <laughs> just around having conversations with people and trying to achieve win wins. Yeah. It's really, it is lovely, <laughs> uh, but it's not kind of limitless wealth, I have okay. to say. But I, I don't know when I go with that though, because it is great. I mean, look at my office, it's a, it's a lovely experience. So, I don't know about urban legends. What, other, what kind of urban legends? What, what are the kind of like the myths that you think people have around I mean, dip diplomats? Um, can you make someone disappear? Me? Yeah. I mean, me? Oh uh, my God, no. That's incredible. No, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, and that's certainly not our style uh, as well. I mean, I mean I've mean, i deleted people from my WhatsApp, uh, but that's as far as it's gone. I've kind of, no, I can't make people disappear. Yeah. It's good to know. It's good to know. It's good to know. Yeah. It's good to know. Exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. Uh, nor would I want to. Oh my God. Such drama. What else? What other, what other myths are No, I'm not sure. I mean, I want you to become a consul general. I don't want you to become a mafia. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, this is not about the Sopranos or whatever. I mean, you know. No, no, no. Okay. I mean, that's yeah. everything I think about. Like, also, to it's very civilized. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Honest. I think so. I think it's quite civilized. We're quite civilized here. We drink a lot of tea. There's a lot of, of tea involved in, in diplomacy as well. Yeah. yeah. Are you a tea person or a coffee person? It's a very good question. Is that kind of in depth, kind of hard edged <laughs> political? <laughs> I wasn't expecting this or that. Uh, I'm going to give that a really honest answer, which is in the morning I like coffee. And then throughout the day I'm happy with tea. But as much as I love tea here, I do like a kind of. Uh, cup of tea with milk in it, as well, which is very British, so just so you know. But thank you very much for asking that question. Anytime. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> it's important. <laughs> tea is a really important part of diplomacy. Yes, it really is. sure. You know? In Turkey too. Yeah. Conversations become a lot richer and a lot more comfortable when you're having them over a cup of tea. Becomes n- Abnormal situations become normal if you've got a cup of tea in front of you, I think. Uh, what's the weirdest gift you have ever received as a council general? So my favourite gift I've ever received, which I absolutely loved, was I went to talk to uh, some kids at a school here in Istanbul, and uh, I'll show you it in in a minute. I've still got it in the office, I think, uh, somewhere here. But they gave me, and it's not weird, it's super cute, and as soon as I saw it, I knew a woman who would love it, and that's my mum. It's a stone, it's a paperweight with my face on it. (gasps) In so a in cute. a box, so and it's so cute. Yeah. And I was thinking, this is just legendary. So thank you to the kids from that school. Cute. It was so cute. And then they made me um, paper flowers as well. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a lovely gift. Yeah, yeah. So I've never had. I don't. I think I've had any of the kind of like the strange gifts. There's actually a, a one of our diplomats who's an ambassador elsewhere in Europe has written a, a gift, a book around diplomatic gifts throughout the history. Uh, which is fascinating. It's things like getting elephants, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just you know. Okay. So I've never had anything like that, uh, but that was really cool. I was more thinking like a carpet with your face on it, kind of. Yes. Yeah. So I would love that. <laughs> so I it's would. Not. I would. I, would, I, would love. Uh, I give my. I went through a phase of giving my mum for Christmas gifts with my face on it <laughs> so there's a picture <laughs> and actually one time I, I did something on Twitter I went home and my mum was making my favourite food that she makes she makes the best uh, yaprak dolma you call it sal- some people call it salma as well but it's, it's actually called yaprak she makes the best one and it's actually delicious so she was making it and I took a picture of her and then my sister told me off because she's like why have you put a picture of mum looking rough in an old cardigan making dolma <laughs> And then somebody else said, is that a picture of your face on the mug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it was. Uh, so I gave her, like, and it's the same picture as well, like a T-shirt and then a pillow and then a cup and then a key ring. <laughs> she's always, she's always in the preach to it. And it always annoys my sisters as well. So. What's the best thing about being a consul general? Oh, the best thing about being a consul general is, I'm not joking, meeting so many people. Uh, and if you're a people person, if you like speaking to people, if you like connecting with people and just enjoying that, then that's the best thing. I've met some phenomenal people here. I've met some really interesting uh, people who are really passionate about what they're doing. So that, I think, is is the best thing about being a consul general. You get to speak to um, businesses, community leaders, uh, artists, uh, politicians, everyone so you can understand how a city or a region or a country thinks and that's a real privilege it's really interesting so what's the worst thing you sometimes privacy oh, okay. sometimes privacy. you know like some, so sometimes when you just want to rock out uh, of your home in like a pair of flip-flops and tracksuit bottoms and just go and get something and then all of a sudden you turn a corner and there's something really very, very important there. And they go, oh, hey, you're looking on me. And you have to be like that. And then I think, oh, God, I wish I was wearing my suit or I wish I wasn't wearing one flip-flop that's blue and one flip-flop that's red because <laughs> we've all done that. Um, so I think that that's, that's, that's the other side of that, just always having to constantly think about, okay, who could I bump into? Um, uh, and, and, so, so, and sometimes I think switching off because it's so interesting it's so fascinating but also here now working in Istanbul working in Turkey which is at the center of so many geopolitical issues now with what's going on the horrors of what's going on in Ukraine with Russia and what's happening on the borders of uh, Turkey now and it's just uh, you can't really switch off um, I would say so I don't know if it's a downside, but it's something that I have to think about. You'll have to think about how you manage that, how you manage your your time so you can switch off and recover. And I'm also worried that I'll get drunk and tell people like government secrets and stuff like that. I would be anxious about that. Did you do anything like that ever? Yeah, no, I've never done anything like that because That's as so cool. Begum will know, I just never get drunk. I, mean, <gasps> oh, I really, oh, I'm very... 
very great quality. It's a good quality to have. I can yeah. handle all forms of beverages very, very well. So uh, I, I've never done that. Challenge accepted. I challenge you. I challenge you. I'll uh, talk to the colleagues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, when you go on a business trip, when do you pack your case? Oh, that's a good question because I am a nervous traveller. I'm not scared of flying, but I am worried about being late, missing flights, or forgetting stuff. So, I, if I'm if I'm travelling in the afternoon, I'll pack in the morning. But I'm not a last-minute kind of packer at all. Uh, I'm better than my family. So my mum, when she was coming over here, she's she packed four days beforehand, and it was a series. <laughs> of, you know, and that, that happens a lot in my family. People packing is an art form, uh, and we are all prolific overpackers uh, as well. So now I've really addressed that. I've really worked on myself, and I I, I now see it as a, a real. Uh, success if I manage to come back from a trip without any clean or unused clothes because that means I haven't overpacked. I'm like Ajda Pekka. I pretend like I'm Ajda Pekka, like I have uh, my stage clothes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> she <laughs> like has it, huge luggage. Huge luggage is everywhere, even just for two days. It's big. Really? Yeah. I okay. So I'm, I'm, I try not to be like that. But then that something went wrong. I mean, I went down uh, to Bodrum and I thought, well, I'm only there for two nights. I'm just going to pack one pair of trousers. And then as soon as I got on the plane, I spilled something on those trousers. And those trousers <laughs> were beige. And then I was there and it, that, that thing happened where I was like, oh, hello, you're welcome. And then people were looking at me with my stain on my trousers thinking, what? What's happened? What's going on there? And then I had to discuss it. So uh, it became a thing. So my advice is pack. think about that. We once had a minister who came over to Germany with one shirt for the one meeting. And, he had, and of course, he had a pen that leaked in that shirt. And so, you know, the, the ambassador was trying to get that ink out. The people were looking to see what shops are open to get it out. So lessons learned from that as well. It's also an icebreaker, small talk. It is, I suppose. I mean, it's a bit like, hey, I've seen the stains on your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get those stains from? It's not the kind of, it's not that kind of high-level conversation that no. you want to have as a, as a consul general, right? It's kind I of like, mm, you just look like a failed diplomat. <laughs> you have stains. So. so what's the most interesting business trip you ever had? So recently I went to Uzbekistan um, and went to Tashkent and that was fascinating because it's just a country that's on the, you know, this massive growth, growth trajectory. It's got a very young population uh, and just meeting some of the businesses who were looking to grow there, meeting some of the leaders there, that was, it was just, it was just fascinating. Um, I have to say I enjoyed going to Bursa. Really? I, I loved going to Bursa. What did you enjoy about it? I tell you, so two things. I met with a company there called Coates, okay. who were like one of the oldest UK companies. They're like 200, 300 years old. They've been in Bursa for 70 years and just hearing what they do and what they do around high performance materials that are then used in sports and then get used for people like you and me. It was just, it was just fascinating. And... I had the most fantastic kebab when I was there as well. Oh, yeah, okay. Kebab, kebab is good there. I mean, it was really cool. Yeah. It was really, really good. And it was in a place that was in a house that was owned by the grandfather of the, yeah. of the owner. And they had waxworks of oh, the family members okay. there. Yeah, it's probably Iskandar's place. It's, it was in Iskandar's place. Was it in a garden? It was in a garden. Yeah, yeah okay. And it was yeah, in a, like a... In a, in a <coughs> Beautiful. So that was so. Just that, and it was a, the beautiful setting and seeing parts of the Silk Road, and so you have this kind of history that's ancient and then modern and businesses there, Turkish businesses and UK businesses growing together. The Space Centre. I mean, it's just it was just cool. I liked Bursa. I loved Izmir. I really, really want to go to Gaziantep. I really want to yeah. go to Mardin. I really want to go to other parts of. I want to go to Hatay, so I'm excited about kind of doing that over the next three years because one year has gone very quickly. Yeah. Too quickly. Yeah, yeah. I'm slightly scared now. So that's one of the things that you have to do when you become a consul general. So you have to realise it will come to an end. Yeah. These aren't jobs that you can stay in forever because there's a whole bunch of other people 
who yeah. will want like to come us. in. Yeah, exactly, you, like you, you, course, you guys. <laughs> exactly, you come and do it better than oh, me. Oh, uh, which is always a good. Yes, you can. Everybody can. I think. Yeah. Well, it's a bit sad to move around. Exactly. Yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, it's also the fun part of doing it. I couldn't decide. So, in your travels, what's the worst food you ever had, or weird, or what surprised you the most? Um, but the food that I I didn't really enjoy which was I was sometimes when you go to a restaurant and they say to you are you sure you want to have this because this okay. is really authentic <laughs> and I'm like yeah no I can I'm a world citizen yeah. I can eat this soup this cold icy grey soup <laughs> that you have to eat with scissors uh, and uh, mm. and is vaguely tasteless so some things like that uh, also just other cultures eat different things and expect you to eat them as well. And if you're not used to them, uh, then it becomes a thing. Uh, but that's one of the things that you have to do with diplomacy is respect that and recognize this is edible and you're just using your own taboos and just be open to it. So uh, that's some, one of the things that I've done for Queen and Country is eating things that I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> have chosen to eat, but I didn't want to offend my hosts, when, particularly in the job I had before going back to Germany again, which was working uh, in countries uh, like uh, China, Malaysia, India, um, uh, Colombia, uh, where you have different foods, uh, not what you're used to. Uh, but I've been very lucky in Turkey, uh, Turkey. Although there are some things that I still have not tried yet that I'd be, I'm quite scared to. Um, but I've enjoyed kakarech, which I know that a lot of people mm. have found quite taboo. But I haven't had ishkenba cholbasi yet. Okay. I hate it. But I like it, but I can see your point. It's, the, the texture is also a bit funny. But is the it? taste is really good. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. So maybe I need to try yeah. that. I think that's one of the things that I'm going to try. Yeah, you, you should, take me you for a good ishkenba sure. cholbasi? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. So I'm open to those things as well. Okay. But I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, the idea of eating things like snails or frogs' legs was just like horrific. Yeah. But now I'm kind of like mm, bringing up. So maybe I could end up being an Ishkembe yeah. addict. I think you will. I mean, why really? don't you like it? I don't think you will. <laughs> I mean, so I don't like you like the taste or the idea of? The idea of I've never okay. tried. But You've never tried. How did you get it in? Let's do it. Let, let's let's do it. Let's kind of like challenge ourselves, Begum Hanum. Yes, let's do it. Let's, let's not do it in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the winter soup. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Good we'll to know. Good to know. Yeah, but there are a lot of good Ishkambi places around here. You sound like a pro. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward to trying it. Is it spicy or is it not spicy? Um, it's not spicy, but you can put some vinegar and... Um, Peppers, if you want. It's not spicy, but it's a really hearty soup. So hearty is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for summer, I think it can be a bit much, but for a night, a drunk night, at the end of the night, the, night. the best okay. thing ever. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. And you don't get drunk, but you can still go. I don't get drunk, but I will still eat. try the escape. Yeah, yeah. Good to know. Thank you. I feel that I'm learning more from you guys than like, I'm giving you this interview, I have to say. How to become a non council general. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just ordinary Turkish person. <laughs> Is there such a thing as an ordinary Turkish person? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, how many countries have you been so far? Which one did you like the most? Uh, I, can't, I don't know how many countries I've been to because I've been to quite a lot. I have to say, I'm loving. Turkey. I'm loving. I'm loving it here. I'm loving how beautiful the countryside is here. And I just even like traveling from Istanbul to Ankara and just that route on the way and how it changes when you do it depending on the time of the year. Just I just think it, it's genuinely a kind of breathtakingly beautiful country with you everything here. You have mountains. You have the sea. You have. Uh, green forests you just it's so that I think is really uh, beautiful and you have cities like Istanbul so and Istanbul is a world it's a genuine world city it's a big throbbing exciting challenging metropolis 
I love that. I was born in one, so I, I dig it. Um, what's your go-to life to escape events? Uh, I don't lie. I don't. I honestly, Perfect. I just say, listen, I'm really. I don't. I don't. I'm also really bad at lying. I've got okay. a terrible poker face as well. So I just say I have to go, and that's, that's it. That works. Simple, as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Just yeah. the best rule of thumb is don't lie. Yeah. Lying gets you into. I mean, you end up creating a fantasy scenario involving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have to go and do something with, and then they ask you again and. And you say, no, I don't have a dog. So I thought you had to go and you know, let your dog out or something. So don't, don't lie. Okay. When you become a constant, well, don't lie because people will just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't okay. create. Mistakes don't make life lie. complicated. Life is complicated enough. Yeah. Just say, got to go, got to bounce. Yeah, it's okay. So, who should be the next James Bond? Oh, wow, that's a really, really good question. Um, so I really, really love Idris. Al Elba, Elba, okay. Elba, I think would be a phenomenal James Bond. Um, I think someone like Michaela Cole, I think would be an amazing Jane Bond or James Bond. Or um, I think Tom Hardy would be a great James Bond as well. So many, op so many, uh, so many options now. So I don't, I don't know. Who do you think would be a great James Bond? I don't watch James Bond series, I'm sorry. I know, <laughs> yes, I know. But I, I That's know. really shocking. Yeah. So we need to, like, we go out for the um, Ishkem Okay. And then we watch James Bond while yes. eating Ishkem Bear. We'll, <laughs> choose, we'll choose one, like, in a, in a really kind of like frosty environment or something. That's, that's that, a great plan. That would be can. good. I mean, nobody I has tried it before. I can't so. think so. But I think that, you know, Daniel Craig has been a great James Bond. He'll be a tough one to follow. Um, but yeah, Idris Elba would be a really great James Bond. If you could have a background music for your entrance to a meeting room, what would that be? <laughs> I do like that question a lot as well. Um, oh, do you know what? It, I, would, I would really love it to be something like chic, good times. That would be really good. Yeah. That would be kind of like walking into that will, would be quite good. Or um, in that case, the... Um, What's the, is it Grandmaster Flash and um, Rap, Rap is the Light, yeah. which is the other version of that as well. That's a really good question. So yeah, Chic, Good Times, or Rap is the Light would be a pretty cool one um, as well. But the only thing that's now going in my head now is the Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> I, can't get that, I can't get that out now as well, because it's iconic. Yeah, um, yeah so those, they, that's a good question. We can try it, really, literally. Yeah. I can just go. We try. You can just try it. Some yeah, speakers. exactly. Yeah. That's because how it works. I think so. It's the ultimate positive, positive with energy. Yeah. Is that 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 song? So I'd say "Good Times" by Chic or "Rapper's Delight." Okay. So our last question: Do you think we could be council generous? So I think you could. Um, maybe just ahead of you to build your diplomatic skills <laughs> instead of, you I know. Don't have any. <laughs> I study political science. <laughs> Seriously, so, yes. Do you know what? So if you've got an interest in politics, yeah. I think that you could be a constant because it's all about that. And if you've got an interest in people, which you do, otherwise you wouldn't be doing this podcast. Yeah. So I think you could be consul generals. Um, yeah, I think you could. A good one or a bad one? I have total confidence in both of you being very good consul generals. Are you? I mean, you have to be good at listening to people. And are you good listeners? <laughs> so I think that's I'm the main optimistic. thing. Yeah. That's the main thing. So uh, I think as long as you're good listening, so, uh, good listeners, and you're open, uh, and yeah, and you enjoy meeting people, and you enjoy making things happen, you're making this podcast happen. I don't know what you're going to do with it if you want to keep <laughs> it or you might delete the whole thing. Um, you know, and you know, you're trying, you're being courageous to try new things as well, and that I think is a good good skill and characteristic to have in this and any job really. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. So we had so much fun. Spending an hour with us.